Hello, and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. Today, we're joined by Jeff Wadholm, who has a plethora of experience uh, running operations, revenue operations, and sales operations for a number of different businesses. Um, currently at MindBody. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. And let, let's kick this off because I'm seeing about seven years of experience, right? But I, I want to understand how you transitioned it was from finance, like the finance area into operations. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so I, yeah, I grew up, I actually, my early career was in sales, uh, fairly tragic experiences, uh, before the internet, cold calling, picking up the phone book and finding names and, and calling. So I uh, had a, had a good unsuccessful run in sales. Um, but, but my, my early career aspirations were I was in, in FP and a in, in finance, uh, loved the analytics side and, and loved living in spreadsheets and data. Um, so I spent quite a few years doing that. I worked for a, a big company out of Amsterdam called Walters Kluwer um, and, and loved working in their FP&A team, uh, had a lot of great experiences. And, um, and I always attributed to a big chunk of the success of my career. Um, I believe that finance is the, the language of business. And, um, and it really set me up to understand um, how data works and how important we, it is to tr- drive decisions based on that, that information. So um, one day I had a, a sales leader who later became a, a friend and a mentor. And he just said, hey, um, why don't you come do that same thing you're doing over, over there? Come do it over here. Um, a little closer to the fire, closer to the business. And, uh, and that was about a decade ago. Um, and, uh, and I've been really enjoying the career journey ever since. And that was to probation when you moved from what's to okay, also awesome. well, yeah. that was like the start of the the sales revenue and business operations. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of the that was the exit from FP and A and the uh, entrance into the go to market side of the business. Um, the, the funny quote I love to share is is uh, is this leader and friend of mine said, uh, ah, you, have, "You have too much personality to work in finance," and. Uh, and, and I said, well, you know, I'm partially offended and, and partially flattered. And, uh, and it ended up being a, a great, a great friendship, a great career move. You know, at the time, um, sales ops was not nearly as prevalent as it was today. And rev ops didn't have a, a seat at the table. So it was a bit of a risk in my mind, especially as a, a more, um, you know, conservative finance uh, leader at the time. So uh, but it's been a great transition. It's really been fun to to join this side of the business. Um, we have a lot of fun. We work hard and play hard on this side. It's it's really um, it's really interesting to be on the front end of this the results. Um, in FP&A, you're doing a lot of uh, back end reporting, right? Reporting the weather. Uh, yesterday was 72 and sunny. The day before it was 55 and cloudy. Um, and on the front end here in RevOps and uh, Sales Ops, you get to be part of the part of the weather changing team. Exactly. Yeah. So not just reporting, but forecasting what what could and might happen in the future that's right awesome now let's focus in on mind body you're not actually the first guest we've had from mind body so but yeah. we could just quickly uh, remind the listeners size of business and kind of size of sales team yeah yeah so mind body is a is a SaaS company we support the wellness industry so fitness uh, integrative health salons and spas uh, we're very very large global organization, span across um, I don't know, thirty or forty countries, fifty sixty thousand customers, and um, and 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 support. Um, uh, the interesting part is we support both businesses and we have a play for consumers or customers like you and I um, to be able to connect themselves to wellness. Um, and uh, and our and our global sales organization is uh, anywhere between one hundred and fifty, one hundred and seventy five total global reps. And uh, primarily, our go-to-market motion is is uh, inside inside sales. Awesome. And the current kind of sales or revenue ops tech stack. Yeah. yeah. So we so our um, our revenue operations function supports a, a fairly broad stack, but our our core competencies are around um, Salesforce. Uh, our, our enablement platform that we use is Outreach. Um, we're an Eloqua user. Um, Big, uh, big proponents of Gainsight. Uh, we also leverage in contact as well on the CS side. So our revenue operations team spans the full, um, the full go-to-market revenue suite. So we uh, we go across all the different verticals and, and partner into those into those organizations. Got it. Awesome. Now I assume you guys have been going slightly more remote over the past few months. What challenges has that brought up, and what are you guys doing to alleviate those? 
Yeah, yeah. You know, we're a, a little interesting uh, business case because of the fact that we were primarily inside sales before um, the world flipped on its on its head. Um, and so we have a little we have a different set of challenges. And the challenges for us are um, around motivation, around compensation, around customer empathy. Um, being in the industry that we're in, supporting uh, the fitness industry, which has been just decimated with shutdowns, salons have been shut down. Um, we don't ha- we don't have the, the lifeline that you know supporting a, a necessary business, right? Like a hospital um, or a grocery store. Um, and so for us, the, the biggest challenge has been is how do we continue to run the business, attempt to grow the business, but also you know do right by our customers. Uh, we're a very customer centric organization, um, and, and leading with empathy has been the the core of of how we go to market, um, but also the biggest challenge we have. So our, our teams are, are used to spending time on the phone, spending time in our systems. Um, so thankfully for us, the change management there was was a bit less than if we had field sales. Um, but now it's been around you know the outreach and the content and the enablement and the approach. Um, and then internally at MindBody, um, like most folks, we're focused on how do we stay connected? How do we stay well? How do we stay healthy? And uh, make sure that our reps are in a good place um, to be able to uh, to go support our customer base the best that we can. Got it. So both trying to support the customers and then the reps. Uh, question though, like surely a number of deals in the pipeline of your reps will probably just be off the cards for a number of months, right? What were what were you trying to like? What guidance were you giving the reps to to reach out and speak with these? people like were you creating content about how they can like get through the time like how did that work yeah um so i, I think early on in the in the covid crisis mind body has uh, differentiated itself as a as a thought leader in our industry we've really um, relied on our our full our c-suite our marketing team our sales enablement organization have done a great job of um, providing resources and for us it's it's been less about how do we monetize um, the downturn um, and instead, how do we help these customers who are our peers of ours? These are friends of ours. You know, who owns a gym and a salon and a spa and a massage? Um, that, that's just people like you and I, Tom. And so we've we've spent most of our time working on how do we be thought leaders around um, what is what does the world look like at a gym once the world opens, and how do you be safe, and how do we talk about cleanliness and social distancing in the gym space? Um, on the salon and spa side, um, we've been talking about how do you have a contactless journey, right? So how do we have our customers, our, our, our customers, customer come in, um, get their hair done, go for a massage without doing any of that typical, um, you know, tra- tra- transaction of dollars or payments. Um, and then, um, and then the big thing that we did was reacted quickly with a, a new product around our video. Um, and so just being on, being a video on demand and live stream options, was our you know biggest corporate response from a product perspective to be able to show our customers, hey, we're here with you, and we've got a uh, we've got a product offering that is in line with where we are in the market. So, um, so that was you know again for us, it's been less about how do we how do we come out of this you know financially successful, and how, and on the other side, how do we become industry leaders? How do we make sure that we're leading with our empathy with our customers and um, and just taking care of of, the, of those around us. Over the past few weeks, we've spoken to a hundred sales leaders around the world to understand the impact of COVID-19 on revenue. And we've combined these insights into one single report that covers the immediate impact, the commercial outlook, the tech stack that you need, and actionable advice for sales leaders. You can claim this whole report completely for free if you go to ebster.com forward slash COVID. That's ebster.com forward slash COVID. Got it. Uh, I mean, it makes it makes total sense to create content around that kind of stuff because you're able to help them. Uh, that adds value to them, but also then they be better customers for you guys. It, 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 yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Hope, exactly. The hope eventually is that when the world turns around, um, we all remember the relationships we built during COVID. Um, and for our sales organization, it's been an incredible, challenging time, like most sales organizations. Um, I think, you know, sure, there's been a few industries where there's been tailwinds, but, you know, prevailing um, headwinds across most industries. And, and, and we're no different. Um, and so our, our sales team has um, been heads down, 
Uh, we've been trying to provide content that caters, you know, as best as possible to uh, to the environment we're in. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, things like forecasting and and you know growth rates and targets. This is a hopefully a once in a lifetime um, space that we're in, and so we're just taking it day by day. Got it. How have the the targets or objective for the reps changed? Yeah, that's been the I think the biggest challenge from a you know purely sales operations is is um, is just how do you set targets that that motivate and reward our sales organization? How do you do right by your organization? Right from a you know expense standpoint to make sure you're managing your expenses, um, it's been a challenge. So it's been a, a bit of a belt and suspenders approach. Um, you know, our executive team is is more involved than ever in how we succeed as a business. How do we make sure that our reps can um, can find success and have success? And, uh, and and for us, we've we've changed the commission model some to make sure that we're um, we're accounting for the you know, non predictability. Um, and then you know, of course, changed our, our targets and our plans to to accommodate for the environment that we're in. So it, it's been it's been probably uh, less of a one eighty, more of a ninety degree turn for us. But it's been you know day by day, month by month, um, in a you know prevailing SMB business like we are. It's high velocity, um, and so we run our business accordingly. We're changing um, as the environments change, and, and trying to make sure we again we do right by our, our teammates. Uh, our sales organization, uh, and and still um, with the the foundation around how do we do best by our customers. Got it. Do you think the commission changes are going to be temporary or, or permanent? That's a, it's a it's a great question. I, I think the uh, I think it's too early to answer that with any sort of uh, with any sort of certainty. Um, I think the you know the, the the reps are in the same boat as all of us. We see what's happening in the world. We see unemployment levels. We see all of the, the craziness that's happening in COVID. And so, you know, we're definitely taking a we're all in this together approach. Um, I, my hope as an ops leader would be that we all learn something, right? Let's, let's take this opportunity and say, hey, when we look back in the rearview mirror, we're standing on the beach, um, arm in arm, looking back at the waves, we say, we learned a few things here. Um, will comp plan changes be permanent? Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, and you know, probably a little bit based on recovery, a little bit based on feedback. Um, but I know for sure that we're, we're going to take some. Uh, we're going to take some of the lemonade we've squeezed here and uh, and bring it with us for sure. <laughs> um, forecasting, how like are accurate forecasts possible right now? How, how are you able to create confidence? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say I, I'll. I'll Put on our sales leaders. Our sales leaders have been incredible. We've had a still a very predictable business. Sure, there's been retraction, like there is everywhere in the world, and how in our numbers and performance. Um, but as a general statement, our our forecast predictability has been pretty darn accurate. Um, and we have a, a great sales leadership team. We're staying close to the close to the deals uh, in an SMB business like ours. Um, you know, when you're when you're when you're um, not relying on multi-million dollar deal, that's very binary to the success of your forecast. We get a little bit more predictability. Um, so we're we're in the volume game of how do we how do we make sure that we're staying ahead of that? Looking at pipeline, voice of field. Um, you know, certainly um, it's a bit of a, a, a bit of an art, and less of a science right now. Um, but our but I, I'll just I'll ride right on our sales leaders. They've stayed really close, very communicative. Um, through this time, and we've had uh, pretty good luck uh, on hitting targets. And our sales organization has, has responded to the environment in a in a in a fantastic way. Um, something we're really proud of. I'm proud of is the team. The team has uh, has buckled down and, and worked twice as hard in, in the most challenging environment. Um, and I think you know we're feeling and, and celebrating our own internal successes. Um, you know, given given the headwinds we're facing. Cool um, KPIs. Have you? changed the metrics that you've been tracking since the virus yeah yeah i think uh, i hope we all have um i know you know i know for sure we're not nearly as as focused today on um you know pipeline in and closed one deals out um our focus has been much more on how do we make sure that we are again putting our customers at the forefront of everything we do um and then kind of following that through the life cycle right is how does that translate to pipeline what do conversion rates look like during this uh, during this time um how do we think about um you know re- things like customer retention and expense management internally um it's just been a it's been a different dialogue you know probably the 80 20 looks looks the same and maybe even the 90 10 
Um, but I think we're just, we're taking different early indicators, a few lagging indicators. Um, we have a really, really impressive data science team that stayed on top of trends across the world as different regions are closing and opening, you know, based on their status with COVID um, and using those indicators to say, okay, what, what might this look like when this next region of the world opens and how, and how do we make sure that we um, help our customers come out of it successfully? Um, and, and at that point, then hopefully, you know, expand our our uh, impact in their businesses. So, um, so I think we've been a, a little bit more predictive that way, um, and then looking uh, lagging um, at, at some of the some of the impacts and lagging, and then how do we how do we feed that into the forecast? We've done, a, uh, they say, we've done a pretty good job, I think, of of managing through it. Great communication, um, you know, going home for all of us. We went one hundred percent remote, you know, like like a lot of us. And, uh, and our communication, I think, has increased um, in, in, you know, volume and, and effectiveness and, and efficiency. Um, and that's really helped us uh, to, to, stay, to stay, stay afloat on where things are in the world. Awesome. Now, final two questions. And they're actually kind of the same question is what or who is the one person who's been the most inspirational in your sales of career? Oh, that's a, that's a really great question. Um, you know, I think, I think probably the people that have been the most inspirational are people that are on my teams. Um, I always, I would say that, um, I've worked with a, you know, a few people that stand out as just some of the finest operators, um, that I've ever worked with. Um, what I love about sales and revenue ops is, um, is the variety of, of, of backgrounds and, and personalities that you get. So you, you have, you know, very technical folks, right? You know, multi-dimensional workflows, API, interoperability. You've got highly analytical folks that are deep in the data and reporting and analytics. Um, you have your creative types that are in enablement, putting customer-facing documents together. Um, and then, you know, of course, you've got operators who are tasked with making it all happen, right? Um, and I think probably the most inspirational folks are, are people that I've got to watch day to day um, be in their, in their best swim lane. Um, and I can you know, think of a, a, a few of the people I've had the chance to work with offhand, just watching them operate at that highest level, taking that thing that looked unattainable and, and making it so um, the outputs that we get on the creative side, the solutions we solve. Um, I think that's actually been the most inspirational to me. I, I try my hardest not to look up and out. Um, I try to focus down and in. Um, and, and maybe in, in 2020 with the, the resurgence of personal branding and all the things that are happening, um, it may not be the it may not be the most fashionable. But uh, I think the most inspirational uh, people I've I've, I've uh, encountered have, have been in my inside of our organizations that I get to partner with every day. Um, and that's not the cheeky, flattering um, response. Um, I just ha- have had uh, have had such great people that I've got to work with. I, I you know I'd say I could probably think of a handful of them and say yeah that, that was special. Those guys are awesome. What a, a lovely note to finish on. And the the kind of one part that I think is going to be the most impactful from this episode is your quote about bringing some of the lemonade yeah. along with us into the future. So with that, we'll close the episode. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate having me. Thank you.